Welcome to RC Monte Carlo. When you first start RC Monte Carlo, Excel looks the same as it always has. But if you look carefully, you'll see a new tab on the ribbon. And when we click on that tab, we'll see some new groups. Simulation commands, edit, help about. For this video, we'll concentrate on the simulation commands. They are a random number generator, a filter for the simulation, and calculate results. We'll actually just concentrate on the random number generator and the calculate results. The filter will be the subject of a separate video. So let's say we want to simulate a situation where a pedestrian struck by an auto, a car skids to a stop with locked tires. We have an estimate on the skid distance of 95 to 110 feet. The drag factor we know from research for locked tires on asphalt is 0.75 with a standard deviation of 0.05. So let's set this up. I need a column for my distance. I'll need a column for my drag factor. And I'll need a column for my speed. Now I'm initially going to put my speed next to my inputs. And that's just to take advantage of a shortcut in Excel that I'll show you. But after, I'm going to need to move the speed over one column, or at least one column, so the results are separated from the inputs. So let's go ahead and generate some random numbers. We're going to have a uniform distribution because we have uh, 95 to 110 feet with all distances in between there just as likely as the others. I'm going to start out with 15,000 random numbers. That's a good number to start with. I'm going to make sure my output cell is where I want it to be, and it is. And I'm going to use a uniform distribution. Notice when I click on uniform distribution, default of 4 for my limits gets erased. And my type of lower limit and upper limit get deactivated, along with the mean and standard deviation. I do not need a mean and a standard deviation for a uniform distribution. So I'm going to put in my lower limit of 95 feet and my upper limit of 110 feet. And I'll click OK. The flashing screen is normal, or at least normal for Excel in this case. Notice I have a little red mark up in here. That's a note, and that reminds me of what my distribution was and what my limits were. In this case, I used a uniform distribution with a lower limit of 95 and an upper limit of 110. This comes in handy if I look at this three months from now and I say, what distribution was used and what limits did I use? All right, let's do the drag factor. For those of you who like keyboards and don't like the mouse, we can use keyboard shortcuts. When I hit the Alt key, notice the letters that pop up here. I'll type Y4 for the RC Monte Carlo tab. And then I'll type Y5 for the random numbers. And that's an alternate way to use any of these commands. All right, so my output cell is C3. That's correct. I'm leaving 15,000 here. I have a normal distribution of mean of 0.75 and a standard deviation of 0.05. Now I need to decide on my limits. Do I want a sigma limit, which is how many standard deviations I'm allowed to go away from the mean? In this case, I'm allowing four standard deviations. Three is also acceptable. Some people prefer four. I could also do an absolute. We could do absolute, and they can be different. I can have a different limit for the lower limit and a different one for the upper limit. So the absolute would be, let's say that we have a perception reaction time, and the quickest perception reaction time for our study is 0.5 seconds. So I would do an absolute here and say 0.5. And maybe I'd want a sigma and allow to go up for standard deviations. Now this is important. For example, with human reaction time, if we use a normal distribution, it's possible to get negative reaction times. And we know that's not possible. So these limits allow us to keep impossible situations from occurring in our simulation. Another example would be when in an airborne, you can get an angle that's too low or too high, and we would get impossible airborne results. 
So we can keep that from happening by limiting the, limiting the angle, either the lower or the upper, or both. So that's the purpose of these limits here. So I'm going to go back to uh, Sigma, and I'll use four standard deviations, and I'll click OK. All right, and now I'm ready to type in my equation is equal to the square root of 30 times my distance times my drag factor. Now, this is why I want to keep the speed next to my inputs. Because I can use this shortcut here. Instead of scrolling down 15,000 times, and you know how long that's going to take, what I can do is use a shortcut and that is, I look, you see this um, square over here. And when I take my mouse and I put the cursor right over that square, you see how that cursor changes from a white plus to a black cross. So I'm going to double click now. And I've just copied down that formula 14,999 times. I could only do that when Excel knows how much to go down. And in order to do that, it needs to be next to these two columns. But in order for my charts in RC Monte Carlo to come out correctly, I'm going to need to put at least one column in between the inputs and my outputs. In this case, I only have one output, but for like momentum, we can have six outputs, two speeds, two PDOFs, two delta Vs. All right, so in this case, what I'm going to do is right click on this column D, insert, and there's my column. Now I'm ready to do the results. So I'm going to click on my speed here, the first speed. I'll click on calculate results. I only have one thing to tell it, and that's the output range. So I'm going to start my output over here, and I'm going to click on OK. And it's done. So let's take a look. We have the mean, or the average, is 48 miles an hour. Have the median is also 48 miles an hour. We expect those two to be the same if we have a normal distribution. Our standard deviation is 1.9 miles an hour. Our minimum was 41. Our maximum was 55. And we had 15,000 reconstructions that were considered. Our 51% confidence interval is 47 to 49 miles an hour. In other words, I'm 51% confident. The speed was between 47 and 49 miles an hour. 95th percent confidence interval is 44 to 52. And the 99% confidence interval is 43 to 53. Now, it's important to note that these confidence intervals are not calculated with the standard deviation. Instead, I have programmed RC Monte Carlo to take advantage of the small and large function in Excel. So basically what that does is it strips out, for example, for the 99% confidence interval, it strips out 0.5% over here and 0.5% over here. So that totals 1%. That leaves 99% in here. The reason I did it that way is for when you have a skewed distribution, the standard deviation is not helpful. It does not give you proper probabilities. But by using the small and large function, we'll always strip out the percentage from the tails. So just to repeat myself, for example, for 95%, I want 95% in the middle, which leaves 2.5% to be trimmed out on each side. And that's how these confidence intervals are calculated. So here's our Monte Carlo results. Here's a histogram. This black line here is what a normal distribution would look like if it had a mean of 48 and a standard deviation of 1.9. And we can see how closely this black line follows our results. So that shows we have a really nice normal distribution. And so that the standard deviation is actually meaningful for these results. And then we have the cumulative probability chart from which we can pull out percentiles. For example, if I wanted the 60th percentile, I find 60 over here, read across and come down, 
or I don't have to come down. I can just read the series here. And at 0.592 percentile is of uh, 48.4 miles per hour. But one more thing you should be aware of. I do not have to put the results on the same page as my data. I could do the following. I'll go over to, I'm going to click on my first result, go to calculate results. And I can just as easily click a new sheet or a different sheet. And actually, I'm going to put it down here. And I have my results now on a new page. And I can add as many pages as I want because what I'm going to want to do is increase my number of random numbers to, let's say, 20,000. And I want to compare my results. And I want to make sure my results haven't changed. Or mathematically, we say that we have convergence. Right? We want to make sure that our answer has converged and that we're not changing our answer as we add more and more simulations. In most situations, 15,000 random number is going to be plenty to have convergence. So that's it for this video. Please take a look at the rest of our videos on other features of RC Monte Carlo.